Let me just introduce you guys. Uh, this is going from my YouTube channel, Ludlow Network. So this is part of our Genius Network spin-off where I introduce to you some of the greatest people I've had the privilege of meeting on my journey as an entrepreneur. This guy is Giovanni Malacrino. Uh, I don't really think he needs an introduction. Most of the locals on my uh, Facebook I can see are Welsh. There's a few from England. So for those of you that don't know him, this guy is an incredible man. He does so much for the community. He's a local celebrity. He's appeared on hundreds and hundreds of TV shows. He's the most humble guy you'll ever meet. And he's a very, very kind, honest man. Uh, he's famous for the Cardiff Italian restaurant, Giovanni's. And he's got some of the most outrageous marketing techniques that you will soon to hear in a second as we progress with this uh, little live stream. So, Gio, we're so lucky to have you on here today because you've literally just finished filming for Channel 4, right? That's right. <clears throat> and, and, and for our own internal social media getting ready to uh, to open the restaurants again which is uh, which is an experience if you imagine being open for 37 years in cardiff and two years in america in new jersey you know so 39 years i've been going now self-employed and uh, all of a sudden you know your restaurants are closed you're given eight hours to close up and to literally get home because of lockdown um and you go through a journey which is exciting scary and then you've got to work yourself back up to and what it feels like opening a new business again yeah absolutely i completely agree with you but like there's a reason why i asked you to come on because everyone's in the same boat at the moment everyone's going back to work after a complete crisis but i did a seminar the other day about how we create opportunity from crisis now every time i spoke to you regardless of what the circumstance or situation has been you've always managed to find a way to spin things around because of your positive mental attitude. So I just gotta ask you, what keeps you going as an individual when things go wrong, like the COVID-19 or like everyone has ups and downs, but what's your drive to keep you going? Um, I think what's important to keep me, to keep anybody going is, is having that vision to start off with, uh, having that belief. Um, I mean, life is no different to a, a, a road. You can sometimes go down the motorway and sometimes you take the country side, you know, way. Uh, there are times when you hit potholes and there are times when you can go fast, you know. Uh, the most important thing for me is having your, your goals, your ambitions, your visions, you know, um, written down and then not just written down, you write them down, you read them and read them and read them and then your subconscious then takes over from there. So I believe what's important is you, you may get deflated, you may get a little bit anxious, upset, angry, whatever it may be, but if you've got those goals to talk off with, the blueprint of where you want to be in life and what you want to achieve, the chances are you'll achieve it. So it's really just resting when you need to rest um, and, and realizing that it's okay to be scared, it's okay to be frustrated, it's okay to be angry, but just okay. Don't let it be the thing that stops you from achieving your dream, your goal, your ambition, because it's so easy to blame others and to blame what's going on in the world, you know, that's fine, but do not use the opportunity of a lifetime to achieve your lifetime ambitions. I completely agree, mate, 100%. And that's one of the greatest things that we share is like, I came to you and your restaurant, maybe I think it's four years ago. And ever since- a Longer maybe. Like, yeah. Well, the first time I came was 10 years ago, but since we've been very close uh, as friends, yeah. I'd say it's been the last four years. And I remember- mm -hmm. the and the first thing you said to me was, I love your ambition, love how ambitious you are, and we was going to stay in touch. And like I said, you've always maintained a complete positive mental attitude. Because I remember once upon a time that me and you was messaging each other five things that we were grateful for every single day. So even when things bad would come along, we was just bulletproof in our minds. And I think you've done the, you've done the Tony Robbins stuff. Do you know what I mean? You've been to thousands and thousands of networking events for positivity. Is that something that just sticks with you? Would you say it's a thing that came natural and you was drawn to the Tony Robbins thing or was it something that uh, you just picked up along the way? You know, it's funny. The, with Anthony Robbins, um, I was, I've always been a very confident, successful person, you know? And then 28 years ago, just over 20 years ago, uh, my son was born healthy. And all of a sudden, say, sounds crazy, I, I went from being excited 
you know, and successful in business and property to, to, to fall into fear of what if I can't take care of my child? What if I can't look after him? What if I lose my business? I started thinking in a negative way and got quite depressed over it. Um, I then bumped into Anthony Robbins on, on television, bought his tapes and realized what's important is what you say to yourself. It was then I learned that I wanted to learn more about what I say to myself and how I can better myself. And then what's important is to help others. Because when you help others, and you teach others, you actually are helping yourself because you're, you're reliving some of your fears, you know? So, so I've done Robbins, Bandler, McKenna. Uh, I've done lots of stuff, you know? Um, I'm also involved with, um, uh, with um, the, 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 the networking in, in Cardiff with, uh, with Paul and, and, and Tracy Swininski, you know? Um, and I think it's important to network but not just to network, you know, to really understand why you're networking, you know. And I believe if you network because you're passionate about helping others, then help will come in a different way to you. Absolutely. I completely agree. Like, I, it's a very cliche saying, but your network is your net worth 110%. You know what I mean, you've introduced me to some amazing people who I'm now mm -hmm. in with in the UK and in Norway, you know, for our new Elevate Straight platform. Yeah. But like, we speak about ambition a little bit. Like I know you've done the, the Robinson, uh, the Robin stuff and the McKenna stuff, but like yeah. you was always ambitious before, wasn't you? Like you, you, you actually told, oh. you told your parents that you were going to Italy to join the army and you was actually going to America to open up a restaurant. <laughs> well, before the restaurant, what happened? My, my parents were very strict Italians and uh, I mean, thank God they're still with me. Um, I wanted to go and live in America and, and work on cruise liners beforehand. You know, I was 17. And I was called up to go into the military service. So I told them I was going to go into the, into the Navy in Italy, you know? Yeah. And instead we went, we did, the, we did all the applications, they did the medicals for the, for the Navy to go into do the military service, which was, by, it was then was important. You, you didn't have a choice how to do it, you know? And instead my friend and I, we then, we then um, as they call it, is it AWOL? <laughs> we left, <laughs> we did, we got into trouble. So we went, we got, uh, the medical then we got our uniforms ready uh, we were going to go on the uh, on in in the navy right the money was crap excuse me saying that word uh, it was not worth having and somebody said they're employing waiters in america so we literally they gave us our passports back we then just went to uh, to um where do you go to what's famous for pesto and it's we went to went to anyway, nothing to do in a second um and we, we got to Geneva. We went to Geneva. We yeah. got, a, a, we got a, a, a medical there. We flew the next day to Florida. And we got on, on this 1,000-seater, 1, 1, what do you want to call it? 1,000-passenger cruise ship, which was huge, right? <laughs> and, and I didn't have a clue. I mean, I, I'd done a bit of weight training and done a bit of bar work, you know? But within four years, I, I, I made it from a salad waiter to a assistant waiter, waiter, head waiter, and also I, I was a, a, a barman for a while, made a lot of money, had a great time, traveled the world, you know, and then, and then met some great people in America who I went into business with, with a restaurant called The Fox and Hounds in Coltsnet, New Jersey, New Jersey. Tell us the story though, about how you managed to pull that one off, because I know full well, there was a little bit of thinking on your feet to make that come together. <laughs> Basically, I'm going to be very careful, yeah. But, tell, but, tell us the story uh, about when they approached you. I know, I know, I know. Come on, come on. So, <clears throat> okay, I'll tell this story because I've got so much respect for Ron Bird, who was my business partner, who gave me an opportunity of lifetime, who I still phone every few weeks, and we still stay in touch, you know? Yeah. And when he came to Cardiff to visit, um, and we were having dinner in the Fox and Hounds in Lane Carbon, he said to me, and this was important about thinking quickly, he said to me, I've always wanted to own a restaurant. Now, I could have just said, oh, that's nice. You know, as they say on Mrs. Brown's voice, oh, that's nice. <laughs> but I didn't. I said to him, automatically, you've got to train your brain to do this stuff. I said to him, isn't it a pity that I'm opening a restaurant in Swansea? Which I wasn't. I didn't have the money to open a restaurant in Swansea. And I said, um, if I wasn't opening a restaurant in Swansea, I'd open one 
with you in America. And so he basically said, listen, if you haven't signed a contract yet, you know, I'll cover your costs. I'll give you shares and so on and so forth. Come to America. So I didn't have a clue about opening a restaurant. I still don't, I think. I just, I just wing it still. <laughs> Not bad for 37 years. But I remember going to America, landing in America, in this $1 million restaurant we opened. In the office, I didn't have a clue about wages, you know, uh, about nothing. I'd I, I managed the business. I, I, was, I used to run a club called Fatso's in town in Cardiff for eight months. So I'd been a manager, you know. But at yeah. the age of 22, I'm, I'm opening a, tw a $1 million pound one million dollar restaurant in Coltec, New Jersey, you know? And the reason I help so many people is because Ron Bird, my business partner, who gave me a chance of a lifetime then, uh, and, and the restaurant was, was successful. I, I miss Cardiff, I miss my family, and, 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 and I came back. I, I can't mention stories about the mafia and all that sort of stuff because, you know, that would be just so wrong, you know? But you know, it was time. Huh? What? I said they'll probably write a film about it. I'll have to charge them for my Facebook uh, content. I did get involved with two families called the Cantonellas and the Santanellas, which was another story, you know. Yeah. But I just missed my family. I missed Cardiff, you know. I, I did the I did the, 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 the travel the world. I, I I met some amazing people and, and I've always said to people, if you want to travel the world, um, get paid, meet lots of people, socialize, you know, and earn a few bob then get in the ships, you know, work on planes, trains, anything at all, but, you know, travel the world. If you don't travel, then you haven't lived, you know. So I'm grateful to Ron, and I'll say that now, you know, I feel a bit naughty that I sort of told a white lie at the time, you know. But, but you know, you've got to think on your feet, and if you think on your feet, the chances are you'll succeed. You can't, you, you've got to always think on your feet. So talk about thinking on your feet, yeah? Like these days, the world's full of influencers, like people pay influencers to do their posts, you know, like I, I know I do some stuff with celebrities when I've done their hair and stuff. <coughs> it is very, very effective. But you started doing this sort of stuff way before Facebook. Because I know if you go in your restaurant, the walls are plastered with celebrities ranging from like small timers, even the Sir Tom Jones, Luciano Pavarotti, Princess Diana, Shirley Bassey. So by you plastering that content on your walls, that's what we do on our Facebook walls. Mm. So realistically, yep. You were ahead of the game. We we do it in an intangible on an intangible platform called Facebook, but you always do it in a, a tangible building, which is your restaurant. So, ha, ha, like, just based on that subject at the moment, yeah, you've you've yeah, catered well. for many amazing people in Cardiff, yeah. yeah. You've catered for some like because I, I I'm so proud to be Welsh, yeah. I, I miss Wales, yeah, yeah, yeah. but apart from just the normal people, like you've 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 catered for celebrities. Like, who who is the first celebrity that you ever cooked for? Okay, but let me come back to that story in two seconds. Let me tell you why. Yeah. There's a, what's important in business, which I learned, so I've, I've done it all my life and then read about it afterwards. As you know, I'm an author of a book called The Therapy of Cooking Now, which is a dream. I mean, I was useless in school. I was always in trouble in school, but you know, I'm now an author, right? And years ago, I remember, for those of you who have watched The Secret or believe in energy or when, you know, you believe that sometimes you think of somebody and they phone you, you think of somebody and they, and, and they bump into you. Um, years ago, when I first opened Giovanni's restaurant in the Hayes, that's 37 years ago this year, you know, that's after a few other businesses that I was trying to buy fell through. Um, this place called Planters, we, we just popped in for a coffee one day. I spoke to the owner, a guy called Brian Fry, who shook my hand and sold it to me and, and this I have so much respect for him because he, he could have easily sold it to somebody else, you know. So he, he was a man of his word and that's important. But even in those days, when people said to me, How's it going? I used to say to them, We are packed, we're rammed, we're busy. We weren't. We were empty. We were struggling. My first ever family called the Hurley family, the wife and husband and children, they sat in the window on our opening night, unless you stayed there until more customers came through the doors, you know? So by me telling people that we were busy, right, they went on to tell everybody else that we were busy. If I said we were quiet, they would have said we're quiet. So sometimes there's a little bit of, of white line that is okay, you know? Tell them what you want to happen 
don't tell them what's happening. So the fact they told people we're busy, quite what happened? Eventually we had the queues of people down the street in the, in, in, in the Hayes 37 years ago, absolutely queue enough to come into Giovanni's restaurants, you know? Now, because of that, I then made friends with uh, some people in the, in the music world and people in television world, you know? And then one day a chap called Phil Bowdry asked a friend of mine um, whether or not they could trust me. And to me, trust is a big thing, you know? A big thing, you know? So Phil Bowdry um, said, you know, can we, can we trust Giovanni, you know? And, and, and I thought, well, why not, you know? And he gave me as a first customer ever, um, and, and the guy he spoke to was a guy called Rory from uh, Port Talbot. Don't hold it against him, he's a lovely guy from Port Talbot. <laughs> and my first ever celebrity who I cooked for was, was Dame Shirley Bassey. Wow. And, and I didn't understand why he meant can, can we trust him, you know? And this will come out in a book I'm writing in the next few months, you know? Uh, but I understood there was more action more entertainment going on after the show backstage in the green room than it was on stage and that was the time i realized okay if i want to be involved with celebrities i'm going to learn to keep my mouth shut so <laughs> yep our shirl is a good mate we looked after her and we yeah. never ever ever spilled a bean about what happened on the first show that's amazing so she was the first in stand huh? Yeah, that was our first one, and we adore her. She's from great. She's actually from Cardiff, you know, yeah. which was quite funny because I knew the family. Um, then we went on to look after Barry Manilow, Sir Tom Jones, um, uh, Ed Sheeran. We we served you know, many many people, you know. Um, but I don't know Tom is my local favourite. But the best one ever was when we served uh, Luciano uh, Pavarotti. You know, we we've, we've also served Carreras. We are looking forward. to to hopefully serving Domingos. That way we would have fed the three tenors. But having Pavarotti walk up the stairs into my restaurant in Mill Lane at the time and, and be applauded by customers, and this wasn't arranged. This was just something that happened, you know, when we did a concert for Princess Diana for a, a big charity of hers, you know. Yeah. Having the big man walk up the stairs well, and, and that is a story in itself. That would take half an hour to tell. Can you imagine what took us months to make happen? It didn't just happen. We worked hard to learn about what he ate, where he was from, you know, everything right down to, you know, the hotel room and how high off the bed, off the floor, his bed needed to be. It's an amazing story. I'll share it another time. But... To have Pavarotti walk up the stairs, and I got some great photos on, on the website, and to serve him, um, it was just magical, you know. So he, he's one of, one of our, our favorites worldwide. Uh, Diana, when we met and, and looked after Diana, she was the most wonderful human you could ever wish for, you know. And, uh, and, and I'm just blessed that we've, uh, we've, we've, we've had the chance to look after these people, you know. But of course, our, our main celebrities are our customers. They're the ones that come in every week to look after us, and we treat them special what we do do which is quite funny we would actually get our customers to sit next to the celebrities without knowing they were going to sit there you know so we knew that they celebrities were going to come so we would put our customers in between either side of the celebrity you know and then just watch their reaction when when it was michael ball one came in and many others you know enrique iglesias and that time that was amazing you know um and it was just great well, to see that. In your house. I remember we sat in your house on a Wednesday evening, just chilling in your cinema room. And then all of a sudden, you pick the phone up and you're on the phone to someone. And I'm like, yeah, you, you just start saying, like, yeah, no problem. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go 10 mil lane? Where do you want to go? <laughs> Tiger Tiger? Anything you wanna... I'm like, who's this? She's like, oh, you don't remember Ray Quinn off X Factor? He's, he wants to play with guard. I'm just like, hey. so just casually, just Ray Quinn calling you up. <laughs> you know something? I'm, I'm, I'm very much. Um... I believe in life, we've all got a dream and ambition, you know? So the fact that a celebrity has achieved their dreams, they're no different to us. They still deserve a little bit of uh, freedom, a little bit of respect uh, and some distance. So what we do with them, we let them eat first. We had um, One Direction in uh, eating with us, you know? And it was a nightmare because, you know, I, I can't say too much, but it was all behind the screens. We, were, we had to hide them away and think, oh, why hide, you know? Uh, 
lovely guys. I mean, I understand now why, but um, absolutely lovely kids. Um, um, and um, they had um, a couple of kids called um, Bars and Melody. Oh my God, they were they were on X Factor as well. And they came into Giovanni's restaurant, and uh, and because they were trying to get away from the girls who were who were going to see a uh, little little mix, you know. Yeah. So we took them in, and they saw my photos of all these celebrities on the walls, and I said to them. If you get into the final three, I'll put your photograph on the wall, right? <laughs> they go into the final three. As it happens, I put their photo on the wall. And two weeks later, they came back in, because they're from Wales, to look at the wall to make sure their photo was up, you know? <laughs> we've got some great stories. I mean, you know, serving customers with, with wonderful food, and we're looking forward to doing that again. But actually being blessed by meeting people who had a dream. That's all it was. You know, being a celebrity, as you know, my son is an, is, 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 is an up-and-coming famous actor in America. He's a singer. He's, uh, he's, he's a producer. He made um, a my daughter... video for you recently, didn't he? So if anyone has got you, well, everyone's got access to YouTube, I'd highly recommend typing in uh, the Giovanni life story. What's the actual name of it? Well, his name is Luca Malacrino. He, he's been on Criminal Minds, Grey's Anatomy. Uh, he's done a film called Elephants on uh, on uh, Amazon Prime, you know. Yeah, and my daughter is Eliana uh, Malacrina. She is one of the top influencers. So she she she, she works massive with the biggest influencers in in the world. You know, the biggest companies. So when I approached her to to sort of you know do some stuff with me on on social media and to give me some of her things that she's got to give away. She said, Dad, she said, you may have 5,000 followers on Facebook. That's nowhere near enough. You need something like 50,000 to start. You know, so I'm very proud of my children. Uh, and their mum's a great mother, uh, Marisa. I've got Francesca, my sister, who's been with me since day one, who's my backbone of the company. Mm -hmm. I think life is all about respecting people and having people around you that you can rely on, you know? Uh, and that's you. But enjoy it. Enjoy every day, guys. Whatever happens, have fun. If it's, if it's tough, it's meant to be tough, you know? You've got to breathe out so you can breathe in, you know? So remember that. You can't just keep on breathing in. So and you just, you can't, on the huh? subject of breathing out and breathing in, yeah? You've done some crazy things in your life. <laughs> How did you feel, right? Because I need everyone to know this, right? Like, I, I've met some crazy people in my time. Yeah, some of my friends, some of the people watching, you know? Like, I've seen it all. But I've never, ever met a man who goes to an auction yeah, <laughs> come home after purchasing the turf of Cardiff Arms Park. And then within 10 days, you managed to sell it all. I know, I remember my, my, my Maurice at the time, my, my, my wife at the time, she, uh, she, she said to me, no, don't do anything silly. Because I used to go to all, I used to go to auctions. And because it was charity mainly, I used, to, I used to bid for the prize. just to push the prize up, you know, just to push the price up. I ended up with so many things that I bought I didn't need, you know. And I would then put them into different auctions. But this one time I went to, when they knocked down the Cardiff Arms Park in, uh, in, in, in Cardiff, I went along and bought the President's Bar. I bought, uh, I literally bought everything you imagine, you know, the fridges, freezers. I had a great deal for £10,000. I must have bought enough stuff for three restaurants, you know. Um, and then I was quite proud. I, did, I hadn't done anything mad. And Maurice at the time, my wife said to me, Make sure you don't think silly. I said, I felt so great that I did nothing silly. I went to pay for it, came back and sat in the seats that they were auctioning off. And all of a sudden, the, the auctioneer looked at me and said, um, right, we're now going to auction off the last piece of grass. And he looked at me and he said to me, it looked nice in your, look nice in your garden, you know. And I thought, yeah, imagine that little piece of, you know, hollow turf, you know. It's never going to happen again. It's the last time they're going to have, you know, grass growing at the stadium. When they knock it down, they're going to have the, the other with synthetic, the other grass they grow off sides, you know. And I thought, yeah, we'll have a piece of grass. So somebody bid for it, and I was thinking about it. Then somebody else outbid them, and I went, oh, I'll have that. And I, I bid. And all of a sudden, um, I remember this little old lady, uh, everyone was clapping. And I'm thinking, why are, they, uh, why are they clapping, you know? And all of a sudden, this little old lady turned around and said to me, Do you realize, love? She said, You bought the whole pitch? I went, You must be joking. So I went to cancel the bid. I thought, my wife's going to kill me, you know? <laughs> and uh, I went to cancel the bid. And as I went to cancel it, every, every um, journalist from around the world with their cameras, right? Channel 5, uh, Rice Sports, 
all every Australia TV, must be about 17 different uh, TV companies came towards me to interview me. The fact they bought not just the pitch, but the sides, the bits outside the pitch as well. And I went, how much, how much yeah. square footage of grass is this? Now you're talking the whole pitch of Cardiff Farmers Park you've just bought and the outside. And the outside. Yeah. Yeah. So I bought, I bought 97% of a pitch. Okay. Yeah, all of it, all of it, right? The challenge, the challenge then was in town I had restaurants where I needed sunshine and for the grass I needed rain so it, so it wouldn't die, you know? And, and, and I tell you, I was, I was giving it away, I was selling for charity, I was trying to, can you imagine when a pitch and a, and a half turns up and at the time I was involved with Intercardi football team so we managed to store it there, you know? Yeah. And that's another story in itself, which I'll tell you another time. But can you imagine, I had 10 tased to get rid of this. And, and one of the things I remember doing, because in school, and I, I respect my teachers, I love my teachers, but we still get on well now, you know? And I remember once thinking, they said to me I would never get anywhere in life. You know, if, a few of them did, because I was a bit of a cheeky boy in school. And I phoned up my headmaster and I said to him, um, I got some, some turf, you know, do you want it? You can put it on the pitch, you can... It'll inspire your, your boys to play football and rugby. You know, I'll give you one of the one of the, one of the lines. You know, where they used to score the tries. I remember going to the school, which was Moston, I went to, going there and actually putting these um, one meter or one yard, whatever they were, rolls of turf in the entrance of the doorway. So when they went there on Monday morning to open the school, there must have been two hundred rolls of turf blocking up their entrance, right? And they must have thought, yeah, he hasn't changed. Not one bit, you know? So I'm the only person that's ever bought, that will ever buy the Hallow Turf at Cardiff Arms Park. Now, remember I said, ask yourself a great question, you'll get the great answer. I remember saying to myself, these words, shit, what am I going to do with all this turf? How can I get rid of it? How can I sell it? So I worked Kate and I went, okay, I know Father's Day is coming up. I'll sell him a piece of turf for Father's Day. And my mind went, piece of turf or pizza turf? So I got these boxes knocked up, size of a pizza box. I had the authenticity of, of, of the letter from them, which I photocopied to say it was the hollow turf. We cut them into square shapes and put these pizza boxes, these, these pieces of turf into a pizza box and sold them for five pound each. It made national press, it made um, the, 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 the local television, the news. They had me there with a, with, a, with a piece of turf going into my pizza oven and back out together. We cleaned it after. But the thing is important is this. It was fun. I didn't say to myself, oh, that was a mistake. I said to myself, how can I get rid of how can I sell this turf, right? Um, I, I, I bought it for three and a half thousand pounds instead of 13,000 pounds. That's another story. And, um, and I sold it for 16 and a half thousand pounds and, and sponsored the under 12s rugby and football, Cardiff rugby and football children, you know, for two years, you know? So ask yourself, how can I, right? Not why can't I? And believe me, you will find an answer. And thank God, <laughs> Thank God, I've got. So if you go to one or three Cathedral Road, where I used to live, no longer my house, I sold it. There's turf there, front and back. Go and nick it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, mate. So you, you you've done some pretty outrageous things in your time, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Can you Never tell? Got <laughs> can you can you tell us a story about how you made national television? For choosing the lottery numbers oh. in your own specific individual way. Okay, so again, right? If you train your mind, just so say to your mind, you know, how can I get on television? How can I? How can I? How can I? Train your mind to think. How can I? Not why can't I? So I was sat at home again with my wife this time, Marisa. I'm sat there watching television right and mystic meg in those days that those who remember mystic meg was a fortune teller and she would say that tonight's winner would be xyz and and that night i was wearing a, a certain 
a jumper, and my wife was at the time there was wearing something else. And, and Mystic Meg said that there'll be a cat walking past, which happened. It was an owl cat. Um, and, and, and the clothes, and I went, that's us, we're going to win tonight. So we did. We actually both won two pounds each on the national lottery, on the scratch cards. Now I could have gone, oh, well, you know. I went, hang on a second. So I picked up the phone, and I remember uh, leaving a, a message, a terrible message to the researchers on the national lottery, saying, we've won, we've won, we've won, you know, and gave my details. So I had a phone call Monday morning. So ask yourself a question and your mind will figure out an answer. And the researcher said to me, so I believe you won. I said, yeah, I mentioned the whole story with Mystic Meg. I said, and uh, I said, and uh, she said, well, Mr. Ewan, I said, we won two pound each. And she went, oh, no, that's not going to make uh, the, the news. And all of a sudden, it wasn't me. A voice came out and said, do you know how we choose our lottery numbers? And she said, no, tell me. And I didn't know at the time, right? Because we didn't choose our numbers. And I'm thinking, who? I think I thought it was like possessed, like Whoopi Goldberg at the time in the film Ghost, you know? I started saying things, thinking, where's this coming from? I said, well, I said, when my chefs were cooking tortellini, making tortellini for, um, for Pavarotti, you know? I said, whenever they made a bad one that broke, they would literally throw it against the wall in anger. So we chose then to put numbers on the tiles, and whatever the pasta landed and stuck would be the numbers we chose. I'm thinking, where is this coming from? She said, uh, really? She said, that sounds great. She said, did you ever win? I thought, well, she's not going to check. I said, yeah. I said, we won seven and a half thousand pounds once, 10,000 pounds at that time, 2,000. We'd won about 30 grand by the time I finished. Oh, she said, let me get back to you. Within about two hours, we had a phone call, right, saying we want to come and and film this on Friday. Now this was Tuesday now, right? We get a phone call on Tuesday. They're gonna come Friday to, to literally film us throwing pasta against the wall to pick our lottery numbers. Let me tell you something. The only pasta that sticks is bloody overcooked spaghetti. That's it, right? We got tortolini. When we tried to throw them against the wall, they wouldn't stick, they just slid off the wall. So then we had to, I said to my chefs, I've got great news and bad, bad news and good news. Said, the good news is we're going to be on television. And the bad news is that we, we, I've told them we can, we can make pasta stick on the wall, you know, and told them the story about Pavarotti. It took us four days to get the kitchen ready. To, to, we had all the, the logos up. We had to tile the walls. The walls weren't tiled, right? We had this other stuff on the walls. Tile the walls, put numbers on them, and then come up with a way. And when they turned up on the Friday to film it with all my chefs to the music of, of Nessun Dorma, I'll give you, I'll send you the link. I think, I think it's on Facebook. I'm sure it's on Facebook. I've yeah. got the link. I'll put, I'll put the link up. Honestly, it is, it's amazing. And all of a sudden, um, they turned up. We did this thing here. They knew we were, when they came there, they knew we were blagging it because what we did, in the end, we used pizza dough. So what we did, I told the chefs, don't go put, in, put pasta in. I said, you know, I said, use the pizza dough, steam it. So, you know, we did it so that it didn't get wet. It just got steamed. And before they threw it, they mulched it up and threw it against it. And pizza will stick, right? And we had the, I mean, you're talking millions, 11 million people saw that. Um, what's the value on that? You can't put a value to yeah, be on the show. Yeah. Well. Have fun with it. You know, even now with all the pressure and all the stress, you know, if if you know something, I think that Tony Robbins says, if you if you go out, if, if you spin out of control in your car and you look at the wall, you will hit the wall. You must look away from the wall. Look at where you want to go in life. You know, don't look at where you're going, or definitely don't look at where you've been. Hundred percent. Massively mm -hmm. mixed. I mean, I, I love these stories. I love the risks that you take. Like how how important in business is risk? <laughs> So, so you want to stand out, okay? You want to stand out. I mean, unless you're going to be shot at, then you don't want to stand out. You know? so, <laughs> so you want to stand out. So every second of your day, good or bad, happy or sad, be as crazy as you want to be. Only regret what you don't do in life. And trust me, you know, you've all got skeletons in my cupboard. If I got three cupboards full of the buggers, you know? <laughs>
<laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, sometimes you go, oh, I did this great. You know, as long as you didn't hurt anybody and you had fun, tell people how to have fun in life. You get one chance this thing called life. One chance. Enjoy it. Embrace it. Love it. You know, focus on how can I? You know, you know, how can I? Not why did I? You know, once you've done it, it's done. Figure out the way. If you felt good, do more of it. If it felt bad, then do less of it. Simple as that, you know. But enjoy every second of the day. And just realize people like Margaret Thatcher, Muhammad Ali, you know, famous people are no longer with us. And they were the, the powerful, you know, the Kennedys, so many famous people are now in another world, whatever that world may be, who knows if there is another world or not. But you know, you've got to enjoy it. But do it for yourself. So many people spend time doing it for others. It doesn't matter about other people. Help, share, advise, right? Inspire, motivate others. But do it because you want to do it. Don't waste your life doing things to make you look good. You know, just buy a nice suit and you look good. You know, do things that make you feel great on the inside. And then if you do that, believe me, things on the outside will get better. And make time for your friends, make time for your family, and make time for yourself. 100% mate, massively. Like, like I said, talk on the subject of time, we're extremely lucky to have you here this late. Because like I said, you've just finished filming for <laughs> Channel 4. So on the subject of filming, like you've been involved in hundreds of television shows. You've got your own YouTube channel as well that people can look at. Just type in Giovanni's on YouTube. But in regards to television, like you've done Come Dine With Me. You've done oh. basically home, like, like, like Antique Roadshow and stuff like that. Like, what, what was it like on Come Dine With Me? Because I know you were pretty straight to that girl, weren't you? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You're thinking of um, first dates, you're thinking. No, no. So, I'm oh, not, no, no. Come Dine With Me, you're right. I know you're so on I first did, dates. I, also, I mean, we did, we did first dates. That gave us like you know, 1.2 million views, you know. But yeah. on Come Dine With Me, it was funny because there was, there was a great team of people, you know. Yeah. There was um, Claire, Scott, Anna, myself, and the blonde that won, we, we, we forgot her name, and she was an absolute... <laughs> you forgot the winner's winner. name, did you? Huh? <laughs> you forgot the winner's name. <laughs> but you know, we tell you something, right? So the winner's name, right, which I can't remember now, <laughs> but she actually helped to make the show. So although, you know, um, we, we, we're no longer in contact with her, we want to get back in touch with her, because what she did on the show was quite clever, and what they did on the show was clever. So as much as she wound me up a treat, they put us together for the right reasons and it worked. And without her on the show, okay, I'll think of a name in a second. Without her on the show, it wouldn't have been as good as it was. My favorite, however, was Claire. Now, Claire has got, we've got 8 million views. If you, if you type in Claire, come down with me. She's a person who made the worst, she's famous for making, for cooking the worst steak in the world. And it was great. I remember going on, the, on, on her night. Mine was the Friday night. Scott was the Thursday night. Uh, Anna was the Monday night. Uh, the other girl, whatever her name was, was uh, on, the, on the Tuesday night. And, uh, and, and, and the funniest was the Wednesday night, I believe it was, which was, uh, was Claire. Oh, my God. When I went in, they offered uh, Anna antihistamine, you know, because this girl had a cat, Claire and a cat. And I'm still great friends with Claire and Scott and, uh, and, and, and Anna. And, uh, and so I took a load as well. I said, I'll take some. So I looked at Claire's kitchen. I thought, God, we're not going to survive this. Uh, but it was nice. She was there smoothing the cat with her oven gloves and then cooking the food. Uh, I saw it, right, when nobody else did. But Claire was the most wonderful, funniest. I, I remember proposing to her in, in, a, in a way that I wanted to be my friend for life. And we're still in touch. So I said, oh, it was just wonderful. I mean, so much pressure. Five nights of cooking. Uh, or eating and drinking, I mean, it took its toll, believe me, it took its toll. And it's great to see television working. But television, radio, you know, newspapers, it's all a form of advertising. So you're doing it because it's fun, but don't forget, it brings money into your business, you know? So yeah, so Claire is amazing, and uh, and, and also when I did um, First Dates, that's on TV, still, I still showed on the television, uh, First Dates, which was, which was another fun film. 
and I did a program called um, oh gosh, uh, uh, not it was an auction program called I forget the name of the month. Um, you and Francesco and, were on it recently. Yeah, wasn't it? that's right. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So we had a we went back to having a childhood argument because she bought brooches, uh, bargain hunt. It's called bargain hunt. So bargain if, you, if you Google Giovanni bargain hunt on on Facebook, you'll find it. So funny. I mean, we had we had our our bust up after so many years because she went out and bought these stupid brooches that cost her twelve pound fifty and bloody made a profit on them as well. The bugger. It's not like Italians yeah. to have an argument. No, no, at all. You know. <laughs> so you know, so, you know, back to what keeps you going. I mean, come on. There's so much out in this world that costs nothing. You know, walks in the countryside, museum. You know, there's just so many things you can do that cost you no money at all. You know, instead of being sat at home on your on your Xbox or whatever you want to call them, you know, um, some people really give in. You know, they, they really give in and start taking medication if they get depressed. You know, just take a good long walk and just focus on what you on what you appreciate. Um, that time you and I did those exercises, it was all about simple stuff. If in the morning you write down and send to a friend ten things you're grateful for, you you fill your mind with things of happy thoughts. Can you imagine the think you've got a choice of thinking five things that make me feel good or five things that make me feel bad what would you do five things that make me pick the things yeah so, but so many people focus on first thing in the morning the negative stuff and then they have a crap thing one other thing as well is when you go to bed at night instead of staying on facebook which i occasionally do or whatever answering your emails before you fall asleep the last thing you say to your subconscious is what's going to improve your life so if you say oh why did today go so bad you know why was today so crap your subconscious is going to come back with all the references to why your day was so bad if you say instead what can i dream about that's going to make me feel better make more money help more people be more passionate be happier appreciate life more what can I dream about? What's that one thing I can do in my business that's going to make me that extra money? That's going to make me um, feel better, feel happier, you know, help others more, you know, become financially free. What is that one thing, you know, besides, besides a great Italian meal, of course, what's that one thing I can do that's going to make me feel special? And go to sleep on a positive thought. If you go to, to sleep on a positive thought, trust me, you'll wake up in the morning with, loads of positive answers and remember one thing one thing i can just say absolutely the first the first so google google is a search engine right absolutely. it's been around for a long time what is the first search engine ever ever built in this world um us we're the we're the biggest search engine our oh, brain 100%. some people forget we've been we, we've got computers in our head how do we remember a memory? How do we remember a photo? How do we remember things that people have said, good and bad? We ask them. So if you say to yourself, how can I feel good? Your mind will tell you how to. If you say, how can I feel bad? Guess what? It'll give you more references in feeling bad than feeling good. So ask yourself a better question. How can I? And then go to sleep. Unless you're making love then. Different story. That's what he's been labeled as on all these TV shows that he's been on. But mate, I completely agree with what you're saying about the simple things as well. Like if we just like look back at your life, you you, you blagged your parents, you said you was joining the army, you went to open a restaurant, you've had some amazing marketing techniques of how you sold yourself, sold your brand and become the person you are. Not one person in South Wales doesn't know who Giovanni is. And every single person loves coming to your restaurant. But you, you've served celebrities from Shirley Bassey, Tom Jones to Luciano Pavarotti. You know, Ed Sheeran's been in your restaurant. You know, like, but like, it's crazy. You've lived all that life. You've gone from owning nightclubs to now you, you, you consistently give so much back. Like in your back garden, you have got <laughs> a chicken farm for children with autism. And it's like, I remember last time I came to your house. You said, oh, come in the bathroom. So I went in the bathroom. <laughs> said, What's going on here? Now, I'm expecting like, him to show me his new his and hers baths because he's got two bathtubs, yeah? <laughs> like, he must be showing me his new bathroom. 
And then all of a sudden, I see like a little school of ducks <laughs> swimming around. He's in his, and he's just got ducks swimming around in his bath. <laughs> and that's, well, we, we, we got so many now. I'm actually buying them. I'm looking to buy in a farm next year. But I, I, I mean, I've got the mini zoo because I, I went to an auction one day. A friend of mine realized that, um, uh, invited me along, and I realized that the speaker was an actor. His son was autistic. And, and that was enough for me to buy all the, all the auction prizes that day and also to get involved with, with help, helping autistic and also Downs children as well, which is nice. We have a lot of Downs children. They used to come to us. Um, one little kid called Will. Uh, absolutely beautiful. I mean, so happy. These kids are so happy with uh, Down syndrome, you know. And, and it's just nice. And you imagine, I mean, I own nightclubs in Cardiff. I own one of the top night, 10 nightclubs in the, in the country, you know. And um, <clears throat> being in that environment of late night celebrities and so on. And my kids said, Dad, you know, they said, you've got to sell your clubs up now. You know, they said to me, I said, why? They said, you're too old to own nightclubs. And I, I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and in the end, I, I sold my clubs. And, and then they said, Dad, you need, a, you need a hobby. And I can't do things at all. So we now have about over 100 animals that uh, <laughs> will be. And I love it. You come home from work, you, know, you feed them, you, you, know, you, you go and, uh, you know, and, and, and you just enjoy them. And it's nice to see the children with their parents and their teachers coming along here as well. And you so, remember yeah, last time as well. Last, last, just to interject, yeah, last time I came, you said, Jack, I got some new animals for the farm. <laughs> I said, okay, no, sorry, it's the last but one. Last but one time, you said, I got some new animals for the farm. I said, okay. Yeah. What have you got? You said, I got a micro pig. He said, okay. <laughs> so you got this little tiny micro pig, yeah. Now, I think I came back about two months later, and this micro pig's a big, big pig. So really well, it's, it's a, it's a, apparently, it wasn't a micro pig, it was a Vietnamese pot bellied pig, you know, that, that, that had appeared. I only bought it because it was on Emmerdale Farm. I bought two of them, you know, I sold one. It was on Emmerdale Farm. You were celebrity thought, animals as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my pig has been on television as well, you know. Let me just share one last thing, um, which drives me if I can. I'm not sure I'm, are we doing for time, you know. Absolutely, man. Um, the, 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 many years ago, about 27 years ago, I think it must have been, 26, 27 years ago, um, Leaflets came around Cardiff, and they, they posted them in my restaurant in the Hayes, Giovanni's, saying that we're going to redevelop Cardiff town centre and the bay and they showed all these little circles of where they're going to redevelop the one area that wasn't going to be redeveloped was Mill Lane okay and that annoyed me because I thought hang on a second the council nor um, the bay it was like they drew a line in Mill Lane and that was enough that was enough for me to say hang on a second you know start off a meeting uh, and and uh, pioneered the first purpose-built cafe quarter in the UK. So I took it from a, a flyer saying we're going to we're going to um, improve all these areas except one area, and that was where my restaurants were. Now you can imagine how much I was. I can't say the word pissed off. How angry I was, you know, um, because you know all of a sudden you know, they're not going to do. I create, I, I, so you know what I did, which is fun. I stood at the end of the street. I'd only just done a Robbins, um, three day Robbins course. I stood at the top of Mill Lane and I visualized what you see now that people think have been there, has been there forever. So Mill Lane, the, you know, the, the cafe quarter in Mill Lane was something that I, with the council, with the Marriott Hotel, with Edishaw, with the police licensing and so on and so forth, the fire, worked together to make it happen. So that was that. Mill Lane, the cafe quarter, um, is the first purpose-built cafe quarter in the UK. So again, you know, when things happen, get angry, but get angry in the right way. Make it productive. Yeah, make it motivate you, right, to be productive. You know, not to be. Uh, what's the opposite of productive? I need to thought seductive. That's different, isn't it? <laughs> Also as well. What's the top of it? What's the opposite of productive? Non productive. Huh? <laughs> non productive. <laughs> non productive, yeah. I was thinking productive, seductive now, it doesn't go. No. Yeah, so um, it's all about having fun in business. So right now, there'll be those who will go, I'm going to crash, I'm going to die, I'm going to burn. That's what's going to happen. Don't be one of those. Really, I mean that. It's so important, you know. 
you know, just take, tell yourself what you are going to do. Get excited. Put on music makes you feel good. You know, do something that makes you feel happy. Speak to people who are positive. Don't get involved with people who are negative. You know, this is no difference to anything at all in life. You know, if you surround yourself with people who are better than you, you will grow. 100%. Surround yourself with people who are worse than you, you will fail. So right now, surround yourself with a better peer group, as they say. Have better thoughts. Listen to better music that inspires you. And realize that there is a way around. And the best thing is this. If this was a shipwreck, you know, you, 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 you're on a beautiful cruise and all of a sudden the ship goes down. Some people jump off straight away, like the Titanic. Some people wait until it sinks, whatever you do. Then some people in the water are lucky enough to be on the boat and get saved by others. There are those who will swim and give in. There's those who will carry on swimming until they get to a shore. I tell you what, the ones that get there have got a story to tell. And that's important. Have a story to tell. Absolutely. Uh, it, this is so relevant because just the other day on the 5am club, which is hosted by my brother D Ludlow, if uh, anyone's listening and they're not a member, I highly recommend that you subscribe. Go to join the 5am club.co.uk. It's incredible. But I was lucky enough to give a presentation on there the other day about how we turned, well, how I turned the crisis into an opportunity by converting my fuel. Now, my fuel used to be excuses. So my excuses were my fuel for maybe 10 to 12 years and everyone knows where I ended up, you know, but when I converted my fuel system from my excuses to reasons, my reasons overrip my excuses. And mm -hmm. then it just took me to a much better place, much better life. You know, like you say, started networking with the correct people. And if I didn't network and surround myself with the people I do these days, I'd never be in the position I'm in now. Mm -hmm. I'm still growing, still trying. That's the yeah. reason why I surround myself with people like yourself, you know, and I think that's what life's all about, bringing us up. Like, I, I don't know everything. I know a little bit. And if the little bit that I know can help influence and shape someone's life, yeah. like what you've done for me and like all the other geniuses on the Genius Network, yeah. Yeah. that's what life's all about. But like you say, but what, what's going on there with COVID-19? How are you? How, are you confident to be back in work? What's happening you with know, you? Know, you know what's nice? It's the first time we've actually mentioned that horrible word you know, since we started speaking. And, uh, and I think it's important. There is so much happening that we know nothing about. There's so many things out there that people are saying. Um, uh, I've got my opinions. My children have told me to keep them to myself, not to get involved in political, you know. Um, we don't know what's happening out there right now. Uh, I believe that a mess is being made. Uh, I also believe that things have been done in their own way. Um, and right now, I think what's important is that people literally believe that at some point it's going to get better. There is a lot of red tape and uh, bureaucracy still, you know, in the way. And I understand the people who are stopping things from happening are the people who are trying to avoid getting shot if they make a mistake. So it's a bit like, you know, when do you jump? You know, and, 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 and that's it. So we're in between a hard rock and a stone. Is it a stone and a hard rock? Is that the one they say? In between a hard place and a rock or something, you know? And, uh, and I believe that you've got to be prepared. You've got to be ready. It's no different to an athlete that's, that's running the Olympic Games, you know? You know, only one person wins by a tenth of a second. That person has trained, has believed, has, has, has rehearsed, has visualized. Just be ready for when those with the power say, okay, on your marks, get set, go. You don't want to be the one that isn't ready to, to perform. So, you know, um, make sure you're ready. But the most important thing, enjoy. We have now made history. So they talk about everything in history we as a nation have gone through this horrible um, coronavirus, you know, and, and in a hundred years time, they will be talking about, you know, you know the Spanish flu and, and coronavirus and everything else that you can imagine, you know, that's happened with, uh, you know, with all these other horrible uh, diseases, you know. So stay fit, stay healthy, stay happy, 
and keep on believing. Anything that you want to conclude on just before we wrap up, bro, is there any advice you'd give to any young entrepreneurs <laughs> or what you would give advice to yourself as a youngster if you could go back? So, always buy a freehold. <laughs> Eat um, loads of pasta and drink loads of beer. Always. Never buy a leasehold. Um, always believe you can and enjoy the journey and just stay out of trouble, but not too much out of trouble. I'm a bit of fun. You're a legend, mate. Thanks so much. So, guys, thank you so much for being a part of Ludlow Network. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button below. Leo, is there any tags to any of your books or any? Yeah, I'm going to put my hat on now as well. So now we can... <laughs> We've got a little audience left, guys. I know, uh, I know, I know yeah. it's a, a platform which people just. Yeah, so Giovanni's Cardiff.co.uk is my restaurant. Giovanni's Cardiff. Dot co there's a book out on uh, on uh, there's a book out on um, Amazon Prime uh, called The Therapy of Cooking, which I wrote with uh, Stephen Tuller, who's a therapist. The, the Therapy of Cooking on uh, Amazon Prime, and I said, really, I mean, Facebook, you know, I'm, I'm I've got too many friends. I gotta get more space on my Facebook channel, you know. <laughs> so that's about it, really, you know. So, guys, has anyone got any questions? There's, I think there's seven or eight people left on you. Has anyone got any questions for this absolute legend? Which is <laughs> mad Italian. From Cardiff and bought the centre of Cardiff to Mill Lane. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. See, that's another story. Can I just share this with you quickly? Absolutely. So, very, very quick. And this is so, guys, the power of magic, the power of the secret. If you get a chance, watch the secret.tv. I used to say to myself, when, when, I, when I was... When I first bought Giovanni's in, 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 in the Hayes, I remember wishing I was in Queen Street. Now, Queen Street was the center of town. Queen Street was the town center. And I remember, okay, wishing I could afford a restaurant in the town center. Many years later, after I created the, 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 the cafe quarter, I, I pioneered the cafe quarter, then it developed, say, Mary Street, the brewery quarter, Caroline Street, and then the Hayes was bought and knocked down, which cost us a fortune of stress and money. And then they opened St. David's too. One day I was sat outside my restaurant having an espresso coffee. And I looked across and there was a set of doors. I had moved the center of town to my restaurant. Don't ask me how, right? But think about it right now. My wish 35 years ago was that I could afford a restaurant in the center of town. The Hayes now, where Giovanni's restaurant is, next to, to the uh, Royal Arcade, is opposite St. David's shopping center, main entrance, the middle of town. So don't be afraid to visualize. Don't be afraid to make wishes. Don't be afraid to to, to think of things that are more than you ever thought you could achieve. Like a like a an athlete, a, a long jump or a high jumper, they'll always try and jump longer or they will visualize themselves jump jumping longer and higher than um, than you can imagine, you know. So think big, have fun, and remember it's a journey, you know, so enjoy today. Learn from yesterday, enjoy today, and look forward to the future. You're an absolute legend, buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, just before we go, guys, this guy is an absolute legend. A lot of people on you already know Giovanni, but for those that don't, this guy is an unbelievable man. He's one of the kindest people I've met on the planet. He's got time for anyone. So if people have got any questions, make sure you add him on Instagram because his Facebook's full. <laughs> and I'm sure happy to, uh, Again, touch thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Love the network. This is Giovanni Malacrino. Have an amazing night. Uh, stay safe and good luck to everyone which is going back to their businesses. Uh, I can't wait to come and see how everyone's doing when I'm back in the UK. So have a great night. God bless. Take care. Bye, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Take care. Bye, Thanks for having me as well. Huh? Take care. Bye. Ciao.